Hello, I'm Dr. Rudy Merck. I'm the CEO of Valenza, and I'm here to talk today about the issue of vitamins. Are they a waste of money? Are they essential? Are they important? And, and we want to express the point of view of Valenza in this uh, to make it very clear for the consuming public what we think about the importance of vitamins, supplements, and what it, what's the difference between vitamins and supplements. And we're very opinionated on this. Now, just recently, there's been several articles on both CNN, the New York Times, and other publications that stated that supplements or vitamins are a waste of money. And I assure you, they are not. And we'll go through uh, you know, why we think this way and, and, and what is wrong with their, the flaws of their uh, point of view on this. Now, the New York Times article was by a Dr. Offit and a, a pharmacist, uh, E. Rush. It's kind of uh, unusual names when you're talking about an important subject, but maybe they're pen names, I don't know, but uh, Offit and E. Rush, kind of strange. But anyway, Dr. Offit is a medical doctor, and we know very well that medical doctors in, in medical school do not really have intensive training or education when it comes to supplements and their value to human health. Mrs. E. Rush is a pharmacist and is intensely trained to dispense drugs and understand their function, their safety, et cetera. But again, in pharmacy schools, there is not very much education about supplements and natural products. And so I'm very concerned that they're taking a very narrow view of this and, and making some recommendations here, which in, in many ways are dangerous when you're telling people that vitamins are a waste of money because there's very many instances. In fact, vitamins, according to the FDA, you can make specific claims for them where they do prevent disease, unlike supplements. Now, what industry are we talking about? And I, and I want to make a very clear uh, position on this as far as Valenza is concerned. We are not a supplement company. We are not a vitamin company. We're a human health company. We're concerned with human health. We're interested in all aspects of human health, including exercise, proper diet, proper use of drugs, proper use of supplements and food supplements. Now, drugs, by definition, are things that prevent disease or cure disease, et cetera. But drugs and pharmaceuticals can be very complementary with food and with supplements in the proper proportion. And we have to educate, and, and it's the medical profession mandate, also to educate the, the public on the proper use of these things. Now, again, let's just start with food. Food can be like a drug taken in excess or taking foods that are rich in sugars or foods that are, uh, are rich in certain fats that we know are bad, like trans fats, can be bad. But food in general is your main source for health. Green foods are very important, things like spirulina, the kale group of, uh, of vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, etc. Also, food can be a source of protein, like red meat, pork, fish, etc. If you're a vegetarian, obviously legumes and tofu and, and things like that. Food is very important. In fact, it is the most important thing, much more important than pharmaceuticals because good food can help prevent disease. Supplements can be used to supplement some of the thick missing things that may be in your diet. Now, the pharmaceutical industry, in this case, the art article in the New York Times, was criticizing that supplements have to be, uh, you know, are unnecessary waste of money. And if you go to their hospital, they're going to want to see what you're taking, and they may prohibit you from taking those things, which I find uh, pretty aggressive. In fact, it would be a good idea to discuss with your doctor what you're taking and what you would like to take. And there should be a compromise. There should be a, a valid dialogue about this. And there are some things that you might want, not want to take before being operated on, et cetera. For instance, uh, ALA, flaxseed oil, 
or uh, chia oil may be something you would want to avoid for a week or two before uh, surgery, for instance. But that's just common sense, and it's well known in the medical uh, uh, industry. But the fact of the matter is, the most potent things that cause side effects are pharmaceuticals, things like statin, some of the uh, uh, prostate health products like finasteride. These things have some severe side effects in certain persons. And uh, whenever you see these commercials on TV about these drugs like stat statins that reduce cholesterol or finasteride and things that uh, re uh, reduce the effects of uh, benign uh, prostate hyperplasia, enlarged prostate, if you will, the disclaimers on these things are done in a very friendly way, so you hardly notice them, and people are engaged in very happy activities. But if you listen to these words or you read them on their websites, there's some horrendous side effects. And some of these side effects can actually be benefited by taking the right uh, supplements. There may be a lack of vitamin C. There may be a lack of B vitamins if you're a vegetarian, for instance. And it's highly recommended that you look at your intake of food and see what vitamins may be missing. And then you can add these vitamins to your diet. I do not recommend taking mega doses of vitamins. I don't recommend relying on vitamins as your source of vitamins. Rely on food. And then use vitamins as a supplement. And I recommend very low doses of vitamins. You're not allowed to make health, food claim, health claims about supplements as far as preventing a disease or curing a disease or treating a disease. But the fact of the matter is supplements are very much like food in that if you don't have a broad spectrum vitamin, uh, nutrient, and trace nutrient diet, part of which can be supplements, you will have disease. You will have long-term long higher risk for disease. Our opinion at Valencia is that supplements should be taken in moderation. Let's talk about the supplements that are absolutely essential and you must take. And if your doctor tells you to stop taking them, uh, get yourself a new doctor. Number one is vitamin C. Now, getting vitamin C by drinking orange juice or other juices that are rich in sugar is not a good idea. You're much better off drinking a little orange juice. It's fine, it's healthy, but it's got a lot of sugar in it. So therefore, I personally take a vitamin C supplement and low dose, it doesn't have to be a you know, very high dose level, but that way I get my vitamin C without having to take in a lot of sugar. And that's a good thing. And I'm gonna, my health is gonna be better for it because if you consume a lot of sugar, it's the road to diabetes, obesity, and other medical problems. Vitamin B2 and B12 are very important, especially in people that do not have a high meat diet. Vitamin B12 is also very hard to absorb, and I personally do take B12 and B2. I also take some B6 every day, not in a vitamin, general vitamin tablet, but I take them separately. And B12 especially, and I don't take the cyano uh, B12 version, I take the methyl because it's been shown that that's better absorbed. Also, it doesn't have any cyanide in it. The cyanide in the cyano B12 uh, derivative is a very low level and not dangerous, but why should I put cyanide in my body? The other essential and necessary supplement that you should take is ALA from perilla seed oil, preferably uh, supercritical extracted, chia seed oil extracted, or flaxseed. Now, Chia, you can also grind chia, but remember, do not take more than five grams of ALA a day because that is dangerous. But if you get less than 1.5 grams of ALA a day from all sources, for instance, nuts, grain, uh, uh, all kinds of things like bread, and, and the breads you eat have ALA in it, but you calculate this, and you must have at least 1.5 grams a day. If you do not, you will die. It's an essential and necessary fatty acid omega-3. And it is preferentially converted to EPA and DHA, not in great uh, turnover, but on demand. Now, the other essential vitamin that I recommend to everybody, no matter where you live, especially if you live in the north where there's not a lot of sunshine, is vitamin D3. Virtually every American has a, and Dr. Mercola 
agrees with me on this, and he was one of the first proponents of this. Vitamin D3 is very necessary for general health. And when we, in our lifestyles today, we don't go out in the sun enough. And also, going out in the sun too much is really not a good idea, especially in your face. If you get vitamin D, if you get sun exposure, you try to get it on your body, because the skin on your body is much more resistant to carcinogen formation, cancer formation, uh, melanoma, and that sort of thing. And your skin will age prematurely on your face if you got a lot of sunlight. But I highly recommend supplementing with D3 every day. And you don't have to take mega doses. You can go to your doctor, have a blood drawn, you can find out how much D3 you have in your body and take a dose accordingly. I personally, I live in Florida. I do get sun exposure. I take about 1,000 IU a day, and that's a pretty good dose. Now, the other area that I think is very important is antioxidants. And, and I want to say some very important things about that. There's two worlds in the antioxidant universe. One are the water-soluble antioxidants, like vitamin C. The others are the fat-soluble uh, antioxidants, like astaxanthin or uh, the uh, vitamin E uh, and, and that sort of thing. So lutein, zeaxanthin, beta-carotene. And what's my recommendation there? First of all, the turnover of uh, antioxidants and fat tissue, fatty tissue, your lymph system and the fatty parts of your body is very slow. And therefore, you can take relatively low doses of these things. They last a long time in your body. And please don't overdose them. Because if you take too many carotenoids like lutein, zeaxanthin or astaxanthin or beta carotene, uh, you can turn orange. And uh, that's not a good idea. So what I recommend is two to four milligrams of astaxanthin a day, 10 milligrams of lutein a day. For men especially, 10 milligrams of lycopene today. You're gonna get your lycopene, don't get it from tomatoes, because with tomatoes you're getting oxalic acid, you're getting the potential for kidney stones. I also highly recommend not taking a lot of beta carotene. Get your beta carotene from the food colorant, where it's used as a food colorant and things like margarine and other foods. But beta-carotene in high doses is not safe. If you take statins, I highly recommend taking CoQ10. Also, if your, test, if your statin uh, dose results in extremely low cholesterol, I, I don't think that's a good idea because testosterone is made from cholesterol and it's synthesized in your body from cholesterol. If you have almost no cholesterol, you're not going to have any or very little testosterone. So you've seen the ads on TV. Hey, you're a guy, you're a couch potato, you're lazy, you're not doing things, you're not active with your buddies, you're not going fishing. You must have low T. You gotta take a low T patch or put a testosterone roll on. And you know, that's shooting at sparrows with nuclear weapons. You're much better off getting your testosterone naturally does decline with age, but what you want is a moderate amount of cholesterol in your body, and you might take a supplement like saw palmetto or other supplement containing phytosterols that does slightly boost testosterone. Uh, uh, taking a testosterone patch is a risky business. Now, one of the other things that I personally warn against, and, uh, and, and you should really consider what I'm about to say, and that is, there is no magic pill that can make you lose weight. Things that on the market today, like chromium compounds, uh, uh, fucoxanthin, things like that, are not going to help you lose weight. In fact, taking a lot of these things can be dangerous. What I recommend, if you want to lose weight, exercise more and eat less. Also, avoid sugars, avoid calorie-rich meals, avoid fast food, uh, and that sort of thing. But there's no magic pill that can have you reduce weight. Now, the pills that are marketed as diet pills, uh, they can have one effect, and that is the placebo effect. And if you believe that, you may lose weight because of the placebo effect, which is about 20%. But the real way to lose weight is 
eat less, exercise more, eat a balanced diet, and avoid sugars and really fatty foods. Please look at these New York Times articles, these CNN reports with some skepticism and realize that when you're eating good food, you're eating vitamins and minerals. When you're eating uh, uh, good uh, uh, food, you're also getting things that bring fiber and low sugar. All these articles in the New York Times and in various popular publications reminds me of Thanksgiving when everybody's warning you about turkeys, about how there's salmonella in turkeys and how it's dangerous to deal with turkeys and things like that. And it seems like every year you get the same thing. Well, every year it seems that the pharmaceutical industry is bad-mouthing supplements because they're very afraid that if America got healthy by taking the right supplements in the right amount, that they're going to have less sales in their business, which is the pharmaceutical business, and not necessarily the human health business. For Valenza, our business is human health. And we will recommend things, including chemical drugs that are appropriate for the disease being treated, but complemented with supplements, vitamins, and essential ingredients like vitamin C, B2, B12, ALA, and D3. And we think that's a much better way of looking at it, looking at it as human health, rather than cha-ching, this is how we make money, so we got to bad mouth everything else. And that's what I think the pharmaceutical industry is doing. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.